Today we're going to take one of our last steps in working in our first Ruby on Rails application, and that's going to be deploying the application. Since we've already built the app on top of Docker, we're going to use Docker as our means of deployment also, so hold on tight. In this tutorial, we're going to do a few different things. We're going to spin off a separate Docker Compose file that we're going to use only when we're deploying to production or some other environment like production. We're going to create a Docker host in the cloud, DigitalOcean specifically, and then we're going to actually deploy our application and get it running out in the cloud. We're not going to go all the way and configure our web server in front of that. We'll do that in a different tutorial, but this will get it to where our Ruby application is running out in a public cloud that somebody else could go and connect to if they wanted to. A lot of intro to Rails tutorials will have you using Heroku for your first deployment, and that's fine. Heroku's great, and it's a really easy way to deploy, but this will get you kind of looking at the configuration a little bit deeper, and we will be figuring out kind of the nuance of what goes on inside of deploying a Rails application, and this will help you when you do decide that you want to have a little bit more control about the deploy environment that you're using. Like I said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a separate Docker Compose file. So we can actually do this by copying our current one into Docker Compose, and then we'll just put a prod in the middle here. This is going to be remarkably similar to our existing Docker Compose file. We just want to use a separate environments file and then tweak a few other things, including the container names. I'm going to do things a little bit differently today. I'm going to use my normal tool set, so I'm going to use Vim for doing my editing. Hopefully this isn't too jarring, but and if it is, I hope somebody leaves me a little bit of feedback on that. But we need to edit our production Docker Compose file. And the big changes that we're going to work off of is we don't want to use this env file. We want to use env.prod. And then we can't share through volumes. And the reason this doesn't work is right now we're mounting a local directory into the container. Well, when we go to run Docker Compose up on our remote server, they won't have access to our local directory. So we got to get rid of this. That does mean a few different things. One of them is that we have to rebuild anytime we ch make a change in our application. So if we, if we change any files in our application, we have to rebuild our image before we can tear it down and restart it. I am changing these container names to end with prod or begin with prod underscore. And the reason I'm doing this is just so we can run it locally and not have any name conflicts if we already had our normal app one spun up. Those are all the changes we need to make to our Docker Compose prod file, though. So we can save this and quit. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to need our env.prod file. So we'll do the same thing we just did. We'll copy our current .env to be .env.prod. And then we'll open that up. We're going to change these values in here to be a little bit more secure. Uh, this user, I'm going to use meal planner. And then down here, we need a password. And this should be something that's actually secure. So we're going to go and generate one of these here in a second. But yeah, this will be different than what we use in our normal env file, which we use in development. And that, that'll be good. So we'll have separate credentials. This is something you would obviously never put in source control and you would never share publicly. You would have it be private to you and your team. I do want to show you one more thing before we build this password, though. And then that is if we look in our database configuration file, you'll see down here that we have this env postgres host. And we need to set this now. So we'll say postgres host equals, and this will go to prod db. This will work the same way that we are using the host as db over here. Docker will set up prod db as a um, known domain that we can point to, so it's a known um, URL. But we are going to use prod db for right now. Uh, the reason we have it configurable down here is I don't really like the idea of maintaining our database in a Docker container because you could accidentally just spin down your database uh, without really trying when you're doing your deploys. And ideally, I would probably want my, my Postgres to run on a separate server somewhere, and so this could be configurable through a URL. So that's why we're going to use the environment variable so that we can just swap this out later on and it won't be a big deal. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go create a randomly generated password. And I'm going to show you a fun way to do this using some Ruby. Um, so we'll use docker compose run dash dash rm app. And this is using our existing docker compose file because we're not telling it a different file name. We're going to just give it a command that is Ruby R 
which this will require a uh, gem or a library. Oops. Secure random is going to be the name of that. And then we want to execute something right away, and that's going to be puts secure random dot base 64. And we'll just pass in a 30. There we go. We can copy this random string and use that in our env prod file. Okay, so password done. Uh, the other thing we're going to need is if you look in config secrets, you'll see that in development we're good. We have the secret key base. In test we're good. We also have that. But in production it's expecting it to be an environment variable. So we're going to need to create that too. So secret key base is going to be another one of these, these long strings. And I'll show you how th these are actually generated. And actually, I think it tells you right here. Yeah, if you use Rails secret as a command, it'll generate one of these for you. So let's save our files. And we'll do this Docker Compose run business again. But instead of that, we'll just say Rails secret. We can copy this and re-edit our prod file. Another thing we're going to want to set is to actually run our application in production mode. So the way we do that is by setting the Rails environment to production. And that's about it on the configuration side of things. Now we can test our production deploy by using our local Docker container. To use our separate Docker Compose file, we're going to use the Docker Compose command with a dash F flag and then pass in the file name for our, our separate Docker Compose file. You don't have to normally do this because it expects it to be named docker-compose.yaml. So since we have a prod one, we'll just pass this in as the extra file. And then the first thing we want to do is we want to start up our prod database. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to run docker compose f docker compose prod and then we want to say run dash dash rm prod app rake db create and db migrate since we haven't run this before it'll build the image and then run these two commands and it's all finished from here we can say docker compose dash f docker compose prod up D, and then that will start our production app container also. And if we say Docker PS, you can see that our two containers are up and running. Now we can go over to localhost 3000 and see what we've got. It worked, but we have no styles. And the reason for that is because in the production environment, Rails by default won't serve any of your static assets. So none of our CSS is going to be here. We're going to make a tweak so that it'll rely on an environment variable to know whether or not it should compile our styles and serve those all in one environment flag. So let's see how we would do that now. If we take a look at the production RB file, you'll see that there is this environment variable for Rails serve static files present. This will return true or false and enable the public file server, which will serve anything that's under the slash public directory. This is where your precompiled assets go. We're not building in our precompiled assets just yet. We'll do that in our next tutorial when we're covering Nginx and serving assets that way. So we actually need to be able to compile those. So this config assets compile down here is saying that if the asset you're looking for is not pre-compiled then compile it on the fly. Normally you don't want to do this because it's a little slow. For our particular case it'll only be slow on our first call and then for the user it'll already exist on the server and it'll be cached for them from that point on also. So we'll use the exact same environment variable flag and that way if we set this to true in our env.prod file it'll turn both of these things on. And then we can turn it to false, and it'll turn them both off at the same time. So we can save this, and then we can open up our .env.prod file. And we can pull this over and set that to true. So one thing to note is we just made a change to a Ruby file. And because we made that change, we can't just restart our container. We have to stop it. We have to build the prod app image again and then we have to up the container again. Unfortunately there's no real quick way to for us to type this out yet so we have to type this docker compose prod uh, yada yada quite a few times. Stop prod app. We want to build prod app. 
which thankfully, due to Docker caching, is pretty fast. And then now we just want to say upd prod app. Now let's go back over and see if this worked. Refreshing the page, it's going to take a while. It'll spin for quite some time, and that's because it's going to go and actually compile the assets, but then it does inevitably serve them up. So this is cool. Running in production, we have styles, and our application seems to be working. In prepping for this episode, I did find a bug in actually how we run our server, so we're going to go ahead and fix that now. In the script start command, we remove the slash tmp puma.pid. This might not always exist, and I actually had it in my testing pop up with an error when this happened. So we can improve this by using an if statement. So if we say if uh, square bracket, square bracket, dash a, tmp puma.pid, then we can remove the file. And that'll ensure that we're only trying to remove it if the file already exists. I realize that this if square bracket stuff is all really weird looking, and that's just the way shell works. So I have to look this up every time, so don't be afraid to Google um, if statements in shell. Since we changed that again, we're going to have to go and rebuild our image, but I'll do that off screen. Now that we know we can actually run the application in production, our next step is actually to build a server for us to run this on in production. So if I use docker machine create, we can actually see this in action. This is a command I've used before. We're going to use the driver of DigitalOcean. We're going to have a digital access token of DO token. I already have this in my, in my environment so that I don't have to expose this to all of you. We want to pick the size to be one gigabyte. This is kind of important for a Rails application because it requires quite a bit of memory when you're installing gems, especially if they have native extensions. So you actually need this one gig just for the installation process. And we're going to call it Meal Planner. This will go off and probably take quite a bit of time. So I will stop this and I'll come back when it's done. Just to go back over this command up here, if this Docker machine thing looks a little scary to you. I encourage you to go check out my Docker machine tutorial. It's pretty short and it goes over exactly what I'm doing here with us creating a Docker host in the cloud. I didn't want to cover it all here because I don't want to make the video too long, but I encourage you to go watch that video uh, to get a better understanding of what I was doing right here. Now that we have our machine up and running, we need to set our Docker client to actually go and talk to it. So we do that using eval, and then we're going to subshell into Docker machine env meal planner. Whoops. Env. There we go. And now if I say Docker PS, remember we had our containers running locally. Um, you won't see anything here though, and that's because we're actually talking to the meal planner docker host which is running in the DigitalOcean cloud cool thing now is we already went through the entire process of how to deploy our production application now we just have to run it while we're connected to a different docker server so we'll go through basically the same process we did before so docker compose give it our special file and then we want to make sure we spin up our prod db first These will take a little bit longer because this Docker host has no images on it, and it also has no cache. So it's going to have to download the base images that we use. And then in the case of our prod app, it's actually going to have to go and build each step, which will require installing things like the Postgres client into the image and also installing all of our gems. So that's going to take a little while. For that, we'll do it as a separate step just to make it a little bit easier. But we'll use our custom file, and we'll say build prod app. Now that our image is built, we're free to go and run our command to actually build our database. So we'll do the run dash dash rm prod app rake db create db migrate. Okay, now we can spin this thing up and see if it runs. So if we run up d, that should get our application container up and running. Docker ps, we should see both of them there. And now we just need our IP address for our server. So for that, we can use Docker machine IP and then the name of the machine. I called it meal-planner. It'll give us this one. So we'll copy that. And then we can go to that IP address. 
port 3000. This should take a while because I expect it to be compiling the assets, but then we should see a page that is very similar to what we have right here. There we go. Just to make sure everything's working, we should go and use a page that actually requires our database. So if I check this out, and I set some sort of password, and I sign up, looks like it signed us in. Go to recipes, create a new recipe. See if this works. Nice. So now we have our Rails application running in the public cloud. I'm going to leave this running for a little bit. So if you actually wanted to go to this IP address after you watch this, you can see that uh, this is indeed running. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and have a better understanding of how you can deploy a Rails app and, and kind of the benefits that Docker gives us with allowing us to develop in a way that is very similar to how we can run things in production. There are quite a few little tweaks and best practices we should probably implement in our setup right now. Uh, one of those is going to be Nginx and how we're serving our assets, which we'll cover in the next tutorial. But as uh, you dig deeper into Rails and deeper into Docker, you'll find some other tweaks that you can make that will make things a little bit more secure or maybe run a little bit faster. We're not going to cover those right now because this is an intro to Docker and Rails series, but I encourage you to do some investigation on your own, and maybe we'll come back to it later. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you could share it, uh, give it a like, that would be great. Let me know what you want to hear about next as our next big series since this one is coming to a close. And I do want to remind you that I'm going to be releasing my first paid Docker course, which will get you really deep into Docker and really set you up to uh, use Docker in a professional environment as a developer. And that should be really shortly. So keep watching the YouTube channel and follow it on Twitter and you'll get updates on that too. Have a nice week.